Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. How do you determine when to leave or when to stay? And if you stay, why would you choose to put up with someone who cheats on you? Today on our space, a cheater tries to play the victim and an OP waits 16 years to find out he's Mr. Wrong. Up first, Mama knows what's best for this OP. Her spidey senses are tingling. Gleeful that I humiliated my cheating soon-to-be ex-wife. Back in February, my newlywed wife went away for a week to see her family and friends, which we had moved across the country from for her fellowship. I didn't come with her as I was saving my PTO to cash out to help fund our next move, which would have been last month. And I also needed some dental work done and couldn't delay it anymore. While she was staying with her family, she called me. I could sense something was off in her voice, so I asked her what was wrong. She told me how unhappy and alone she has felt since we had moved. She said I felt more like a roommate and that I had ruined her fellowship for her because I didn't care for the area we were living in. Very high cost of living. I felt incredibly guilty hearing this. We'd only been married five months, together for six plus years total, and living with each other for four and a half years, and she was already suggesting marriage counseling. I didn't protest. I was eager to work things out, as I adored and loved her very much. Over the next several weeks, I was planning activities for us every weekend. On top of doing all the cooking and cleaning in the apartment, I had always done this though, we had our first marriage counseling session and my wife said she feared that maybe we were just too different or incompatible. Hearing this felt like a gut punch. Where was this concern prior to moving and getting married? Then came March 31st and April 1st. We went out on the former for a long walk after work and some drinks. She told me she was feeling better about things and I felt a huge sigh of relief. The next day we went out for breakfast, then spent the rest of the day car shopping until we found something we liked. After that, I took her out to a very nice restaurant for dinner. From there, we went to the hot tub and had some passionate sex. I felt like we were starting to get out of the valley. April 2nd, I'll never forget this day. I woke up early and despite the last few days seemingly going well, I still didn't feel like things were quite right. When my wife had told me two months prior she was unhappy, I confided this to my mother. My mother's first comment to me was, there might be someone in her office. I didn't want to believe that, but it was always in the back of my head. I was up early as I mentioned, and my curiosity got the best of me, so I checked her phone. Sure enough, there was someone in the office. Someone she was texting minutes after we had sex. Someone she had been sending nudes to, meeting up with, and planning future dates with. I was crushed, but then I exploded. For the last several weeks, I had been beaten down thinking I was the cause of a relationship falling apart, only to find out her affair began, coincidentally, a few days before I received her phone from her parents' house. I woke her up and asked her, what the F is this? At that point, I just needed to unload. I called her every name in the book to break her down and to hurt her. I then called her a fair partner, but he didn't pick up. So I left him some threatening messages about beating him up and exposing them in the office. He was a subordinate of hers and engaged himself. Maybe his fiance would like to know. At that point, I felt I just needed to leave. I told her she needs to figure out what she wants because she crossed the line. I went back home, but before I did, she asked me to continue counseling remotely so we could repair things. I still foolishly loved her and agreed. Over the next several weeks in counseling, it became evident that she wasn't taking any accountability. She harped on the hateful things I said to her after my discovery and how my threats to her affair partner made her view me as potentially violent, and this made her afraid of me. This is despite me never laying a hand on anyone in my life, something she knew. I wanted her to agree to an intense marriage retreat weekend after her fellowship ended. As we're discussing it, a coworker of hers texted me, asking if I knew that my wife was cheating on me. It turns out the affair never stopped, and my separation allowed it to turn into a full-blown relationship. Everyone in the office knew, but were hesitant to tell me. She was still parading around work, talking about me like I was still living with her and all was well. I obviously had already discovered it two months prior, but now I knew that I was just being strung along. For what? That I don't know. At that point, I had it. I took the evidence that I saved in April and sent it to her HR department after calling them. I knew the email address of several of her coworkers and CC'd them. I sent most of her salacious stuff to her parents, siblings, best friends, mutual friends, and best of all, the HR department of her next employer. I let her file for divorce as I knew that would be the end result of my revenge campaign, and it's something I should have done in April anyway. From what I'm told, she was terminated from her fellowship and the job she was supposed to start this month. Apparently, she's also emotionally distraught due to me humiliating her to her family and friends, as well as destroying her reputation in the short term. And you know what? It makes me so happy. I'm glad she's been humiliated, and I only wish I could inflict more pain on her. Some reactions go like this. What bothers me the most is how she tried to blame her guilt on you by manufacturing reasons things don't work. She should have just broken up. 
Revenge kind of sucks, but I've been cheated on so much by my ex-fiance and he tried to gaslight me too. It drove me insane, really. I lost my mind. I can't blame you. Mind games are so much damage. Sorry for unsolicited advice, but consider counseling for yourself because I genuinely hope this doesn't affect your next relationship or leave immense anger forever. Trust me, someday the satisfaction of revenge wears off and the anger might be back. You deserve to process this crap. All the best to you, man. DOP replies, I've been in counseling before I found out about the affair. When my soon-to-be ex called me in February to tell me how unhappy she was, she told me I needed counseling to work on myself. Now I'm working on myself, but not in the way I had intended when I started. The next commenter says, My ex pulled the, I'm afraid that you'll lay hands on me, BS too, when we were getting divorced. Spread lies that she needed to get her and our kid away because she felt unsafe. Even though A, I never laid a hand on her ever, and B, I was also in therapy at that point and eventually had the therapist essentially testify on my behalf that I was no threat to anyone, just someone dealing with the fact that my ex was cheating on me, wanted to take the kid away, and move away, just because she didn't want to be with me anymore. She lost, by the way. F them. Go off, King. Next person says, your mom had it right on the nose. How do you suppose she knew that's exactly what started making your wife feel that way? The OP replied, I asked her this. She told me it was just too abrupt given my mother and my ex had just been talking about my ex-wife and I have kids this year a few weeks before my ex-wife told me she wasn't happy. My mom said she had seen it before and when a woman talks that way, there is always someone else. The next comment says, I hope the cheaters of her partner's fiance also got a message so she isn't wasting her life on a cheater. But well played, she didn't deserve your kindness after stringing you along for so long. The OP replies, she found out and left him. The comments hold so much truth. She was definitely just trying to take the heat off of her and place it on you, OP. Your reaction to finding out about her betrayal is valid. Interesting how she wanted to even go through with counseling when she had no intentions of ending the affair. And it was unfair of her to say that she was afraid of you. She was probably just trying to save face and get it down on paper so that it could be used against you in the divorce trial. Joke's on her. Looks like she got what she deserved. She was walking around work like she was untouchable. Moreover, it's wild how your mother had an inkling that she was cheating on you, OP. Mothers always know. I'm just sorry she was right about this. I'm just not sure why you'd choose to work things out with someone who tried to make you the villain. Next up, an OP spends half her life with a guy who throws all those years behind him. Sorry this is long, as long as the time I wasted on him. 16 years of my life. Bit of background information. My ex, 32 male, and I, 32 female, had been together almost 16 years. We started dating at 16. Went to the same school, college, university together. We're not married, but we own a house together. His emotional affair with his colleague, 22 female, turned into a physical affair. Sorry this is going to be long. I'm in therapy. I've spoken at length to a couple of close friends. I've tried journaling, feeling my feelings, reading, listening to podcasts. None of these seem to quell my anger and feeling of injustice. So hoping writing it down in this group will help. I don't know. February of 2022. New girl joined the company my ex works for. They immediately hit it off. He came home one day and said a new girl has started and that I'd get on really well with her because we're so similar with lots of common interests. X had not shown any interest in other women in 15 years we've been together, so I had no idea what would unfold. So we started playing board games after they finished their shifts on Sundays with a couple of other friends. Things started off fine, but by week three I had noticed they began flirting and she would always sit next to my ex. I thought it was just harmless flirting and in fear of appearing as a jealous girlfriend, I let it slide. We carried on like this for a few more weeks as me and the other woman became friends. March of 2022. I notice X is on his phone more and more every day. One evening, X comes home after work and asks to talk. I start feeling sick as he begins to speak. He asks me what my views on open relationships polygamy were. I asked him what this was about. He said he and this girl had started talking and flirting more seriously at work. They would compliment each other, have inside jokes, tell each other about their own relationships and how they're not feeling happy with the other halves and how much happier they are with each other. But he said he realized it was wrong and he put a stop to it as soon as they both admitted to finding each other very attractive. He felt our sex life was non-existent, which it was due to us losing intimacy with each other in the past few years, and he felt like I didn't find him attractive anymore and me likewise. Our communication was really bad at this point, but we've never argued and never split up. So speaking to this girl made him feel great so they carried on until this point where he's asking me to open our relationship up to this girl. I tell him no, I want to stay monogamous and to stop messaging her. I asked him did he cheat on me, he said no. He looked upset 
and told me to think about it. I didn't sleep for the next two nights whilst he slept like a baby. A few days later, we were both watching a show on his PC. His phone was in front of me, and as soon as the screen lit up and buzzed, he immediately grabbed it. That's when I knew he was still talking to the other woman. I asked to look at his phone. I've never seen someone go so pale in a matter of seconds. We argued until he gave in and gave me the phone. He had a new pin on it, and I asked him to unlock it. I was under the impression they only had short texts here and there as their interactions were mainly at work. But when he finally showed me it was pages upon pages of constant messaging for three weeks straight, hundreds upon hundreds of messages, my ex isn't a texter, so this shocked me. The first few I saw spanned from two weeks of her starting the job and one week after me meeting her. I couldn't bear to read the rest, but the few I did read were stuff like innuendos, I miss you. They had been writing little love notes to each other at work, which were discovered by another colleague. He told me it was never sexual and no nudes were sent. I couldn't bring myself to read more than 20 of their messages before giving his phone back. I asked him to delete all the messages and to completely cut all contact with her, which he did, but he kept her number on her phone for work purposes. I said I didn't feel comfortable with them talking to each other anymore, and he said, but it will make things awkward at work. He seemed reluctant to cut all communication with her. I asked him again, did he sleep with her? He said no, never. I insisted he start looking for a new job, which he did, but he didn't leave his work until December of 2022. The entire time, I was beyond paranoid. I tried to keep tabs on him every day. He had a shift with her. I turned into a completely different person and it was driving me crazy. Every time I thought he'd be texting her, he told me I was being paranoid. During this time, we had celebrated our 15 year anniversary. We'd go on days out and trips together, so I thought he was really trying for our relationship. Skip to March 2023. I went on holiday to see family for two weeks. Due to the time difference, we would only chat briefly when I went to bed or woke up. At the time, I didn't suspect anything at all. I had fully trusted him again. He even came and picked me up from the airport. When I came back home, he acted completely different to me. He wasn't showing any affection anymore. We didn't have sex and he would say the bare minimum to me. At the time, I thought it was because he was extremely anxious thinking of proposing to me finally. Our 16th anniversary was coming up and he said that was always a big one to him because it meant that we had spent exactly half our lives together. So we had a special trip planned. The animosity carried on for a few more weeks. April of 2023. One day out of the blue, he told me he didn't love me as a lover anymore. He only saw me as his best friend or family. He said he'd give it a go for another week to see if his feelings changed. I was a mess that week, left in limbo. I couldn't sleep, eat, work. I cried every moment of every day. Again, I asked him, did he sleep with the other woman? He looked me in the eyes and said, no. I told him I believed him. He finally broke up with me on the 8th. He screamed and he cried, which I've never seen him do. It scared me, so my final words to him were, Thank you for telling me. It must have taken so much courage to do. Promise me you'll look after yourself. Don't do anything stupid. And I packed some overnight stuff and left the house to stay with some friends, as being in the house with him was too painful. My friends were and are incredible. They are my rock, and if I didn't have them, I don't think I would be here today. Sadly, he doesn't have friends like mine to support him, so the following week, I told him he could stay in the house to have space. I messaged some of his friends to say my ex is feeling fragile at the moment and to please look after him. The day after the breakup, I went to install the Ring app on my new smartwatch, but as I logged in, I noticed him riding away on his bike at 6pm. I thought it odd, but figured he would have gone to tell his parents. I was distracted, so didn't install it until the next morning, but noticed his bike was still gone. So I figured he stayed the night at his parents. I deleted the Ring app after this, as I didn't want to keep checking all the time. That week, I would go back to the house to grab more of my belongings, but whilst he was out of the house, as seeing him would have been too painful. We were still texting each other and I was checking in, making sure he was doing okay and being far too caring than this a-hole deserved. And he would reply as if he was the hurt one, in need of loving words and comfort. Not once did he ask how I was doing. I met up with his parents a week later as we were extremely close. Their two cats came into the room and I said to them that the cats must have found it weird when my ex stayed over last week. His mom looked really confused and said my ex never stayed the night. I texted my ex the next day and asked him where he was the night after the breakup. Was he with the other woman? He told me, which is a lie I found out later, he had gone clubbing and went home with a random woman and slept with her. I was extremely upset. We were meant to meet up the following weekend to discuss house stuff, but I said I couldn't bear to see him and I blocked his number on everything and told his mum that he can only reach me via her. May of 2023, D-Day. On the 8th, exactly one month after he broke up with me, I agreed to meet up with my ex to talk about house stuff. I said I'd feel more comfortable to do it around his parents' house while they were on holiday, and it was only a 10-minute walk to our house. We spoke for a bit, not once did he ask how I was doing. He 
only talked about himself, which pissed me off, so I brought up the subject of sleeping with another woman less than 24 hours after he broke up with me. He told me that was a lie. He felt I didn't deserve the truth because he thought I was spying on him on the ring doorbell. He had actually gone straight to the other woman's house to spend the night. My blood ran cold. We sat in silence for at least 10 minutes. I said, now he's single. Was he hooking up with the other woman? He said, no, as he's too much of a mess to even think about it. I asked if she had come to the house. He said, yes, she'd been around a few times. I asked, did she stay the night? He said, yes. Sex? Yes. On our bed? Yes. Is she at the house right now? No. I wanted to throw up, so I grabbed my bag and ran out of the house. X shouted, wait, but didn't follow me. I didn't know where to go. I was in distress, so I called a friend to meet me at the house. She said she'd be there as soon as possible. Just as I opened the front door and stepped into the house, my ex pulled his bike up and shouted for me to wait. I told him my friend was coming in one minute and I didn't want him in the house. He refused and came into the house anyway and sat down in the living room. Next to him was the other woman's bag. I told him to get rid of it. He refused. Argument ensues about how he's taking advantage of me and the situation. How I made everything so easy for him to live his little fantasy life with the other woman in my house. How I'm so disgusted with him and how he was okay to play along when I was so caring towards him after the breakup. He showed no emotion during my tirade. It's like he wasn't even listening. I looked him in the eye and asked him did he ever cheat on me. He looked me back and said no. I told him despite all this that I believed him. He didn't say anything. My friend arrived and I told her to take the other woman's bag and drive it to her house. I'll scour my house for other woman's other belongings. My friend saw how upset I was and said she'd take me into the garden for fresh air. X immediately told my friend to take me into her car instead and he'll pack other woman's things and bring it out to us. So 25 minutes passed and he still hadn't come out with her stuff. I wondered how much of her crap was in my house for him to take this long. So I went back into the house to find my ex sat on a chair with a tiny bag of other woman's stuff. I said BS as if this took you 25 minutes to pack. So I went through the house with a fine tooth comb and found all her stuff stuffed into his bedside drawer. He came upstairs pale, looking in feigned innocence. Oh, where did you find all that? I must have missed it. I said he was BSing me. He had no intention of moving her stuff out of the house. I carried on looking through the house. Then I stepped out into the garden. I've never heard my ex panic more than he did in that moment. That's when I knew she was hiding in my garden. She'd been hiding out there since I stormed out of my ex's parents' house. He didn't follow because he needed a caller to say I was coming to the house. The other woman came out of my garden furniture sheepishly and asked to talk. A sense of calm that I certainly didn't feel came over me. I wasn't getting any answers from my ex, so I spoke to the other woman. She confirmed everything. They'd been having an affair the past year. She's been living with my ex in my house the past few weeks, whilst I've been sleeping on a friend's floor to give my ex space. I told her to leave my house that very day and I told my ex to leave the house by the end of the week. He said that wasn't possible. I said if I could pack an entire month's worth of belongings in half an hour, then five days is more than enough for him and more than he deserved. And here I am, four weeks later, typing all this out in my home that I have claimed back. X did come over yesterday to take more of his belongings and discuss what furniture he wanted. He said the only thing he wanted was the garden furniture. I said that's funny because that's where the other woman was hiding. I said the only thing I wanted from him was honesty, but didn't even get that. So no, he's not getting the garden furniture. It felt good to say no. I slept the best I had in months last night. Sadly, I feel this saga is far from over, but I'm forever thankful we never got married or had children together. Well done for making it this far. I'm just so angry and want to tell everyone he knows how much of a piece of crap he's been to me. This isn't normal behavior after 16 years of loving and being with each other, is it? He acts like I'm the one who hurt him and he's giving me hostility. When I tell him how much he's hurt me, there's nothing behind his eyes. It's like he's just watching paint dry. Let's see what kind of reactions the community has. First one, sounds like the affair partner is just as much of a loser. Hiding? Good for you and go no contact and get a bullhorn and spread the word about your cheating ex and a sidekick. Next person says, never ever get back with this piece of crap. Wow, what a scumbag. It's mind boggling how he could not even give you the basic decency of telling you the truth and gaslighting you for a whole year. Please block him and go no contact if you haven't done so yet, OP. Think of it as a chapter of your life that's closed now. I wish you all the best in life and hope you will have awesome new beginnings. As for him, well, I hope karma gets him real good. Oh boy, I think you stayed a little too long in this one. I'm sorry, OP. As soon as he mentioned the new girl at work that was game over, he had probably already made up his mind about her and you at that moment. And of course, he tries to make you believe it's your fault for his eyes to wander. But why stay? After you caught him, why would you stay? Or at least, why try to find more evidence of her stuff around the house? Did you need the closure? 
If you caught him once, have we not learned that they'll always try again? Cheaters think their partners are stupid. Cheaters think they're untouchable. Don't prove them right. What do you think? Why would you stay or why have you stayed? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time on RSpace.